Hi, this is Adam Koo and welcome to this video on how do you protect your portfolio and profit from the coming stock market crash. So why am I talking about stock market crash? Well, it's because that's what everyone has been asking me. You know, Adam, I heard there's going to be a stock market crash. How can you still be investing in stocks? How can you still be trading stocks? Isn't it risky? All right. In fact, if you take a look at the media, uh, every couple of months you have got gurus or economists predicting the greatest stock market crash is going to come. All right. For example, on Market Watch, they had an article on November the 6th, just recently, that said three money managers who live through the 87 stock market crash warns of the danger today. On uh, Banyan Hill, America's number one source for investing, it says 80% stock market crash to strike in 2017s. Economists warn. Wow, sounds scary, right? On CNBC, they reported uh, Mark Faber, who is known for his bearish calls, he's known as Dr. Doom, he said, it's going to end extremely badly, with stocks set to plummet 40% or more, warns Mark Faber. All right? So in this video, I'm going to answer three questions. The first question is, is there going to be a stock market crash, like everyone is saying? All right? Number two, can we predict exactly when the market crash is going to happen? Number three, more importantly, can we protect our investments? And can we, in fact, profit from the stock market crash? So let's answer the first question. Is there going to be a stock market crash? Of course there's going to be a stock market crash. That's like asking, is there going to be another earthquake? Is there going to be another typhoon? Of course there's going to be another typhoon and earthquake, right? It's not a question of uh, if, it's a question of when, because it's part of nature. You will have earthquakes every now and then. You're going to have lightning strikes, you're going to have typhoons. Similarly, in a market cycle, what goes up must come down. Right after a great bull run market going up, it's got to crash. It has to crash before it goes higher. And the question you're going to ask is, right now, are we near a crash? How probable it is, is it for the stock market to fall from its uh, levels right now? So let's take a look at some data. Let's look at it from a fundamental perspective, as in are stock prices expensive, right? And from a technical perspective, are the charts showing that the market is overbought? So let's begin by looking at it from a fundamental perspective. So how do you tell if the market is expensive or cheap? Well, one way is to look at the index P-E ratio or the price to earnings ratio of the market index. In this case, we're looking at the S&P 500 that represents the whole US market and pretty much the whole world, right? So if you take a look at the market cycle, uh, markets go up and down, right? Markets go up, hold on a second. Um, there we are. Okay. So we know that markets go through cycles, right? They go through up cycles, down cycles, up cycles, and so on and so forth, right? So what we want to know is, are we near the top of a cycle, okay? Um, or are we near the bottom of a cycle? Or are we right at the center, okay? So we can look at the index P-E ratio. And for those of you who are not familiar, what does P stand for? It stands for price divided by earnings. Okay, price divided by earnings. Let me write that down. So we compare the price of stocks to what the companies are actually earning in terms of profits. Okay, so what happens is when a market is at a top, when it's at a bubble at the top, prices are very high relative to earnings. So PE tends to be very high at the top. Okay, so when PE ratios are high, you know that we are getting near the top. After a market crash, when the market's at the bottom of the cycle, prices are very low relative to earnings. So PE <clears throat> is very low. So when PE is low, it tells us that market is near the bottom. Okay? So what's considered high and what's considered low? Well, you have to look at historical benchmarks. So let's take a look now at the first chart. And this shows you the PE ratio for the index over the last 136 years, from 1871 to 2007. And you can see that based on the price earnings ratio over the period of time, you can see that the lowest PE that is reached in the market's history is five, a P of five, okay? So that means that when the P is at five, the market is at the bottom, it's the lowest it can go. So you can see that all the previous crashes, market crash over there, 
over here, over here, the P reached 5. Okay, at the same time, you can see that where does the market tend to go before it crashes? And the answer you can see is about 25. That's the market top, market top, market top, <clears throat> market top. So the market which is it's kind of like a pendulum, right? Once it gets too expensive, it comes back down, it gets too cheap, it goes back up, up again. So the top tends to be a P of 25. That's when it crashes, 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 crashes. Of course, you have exceptions. Uh, during the dot-com bubble in the year 2001, the P-E ratio went up to a high of 46.71. That was insane. And that's why after that, they had a major crash Boom! All the way back down again. Okay? And so that's one chart. You can look at a more recent chart. This chart is from 1929 to 2014. So it's a bit more recent. And again, you can see from this chart, uh, the bottoms are 5 again. The P ratio of 5. And again, the top tends to be about 25 to now about 30. Right? So when the P ratio reaches 25 to 30, we are near the top. 5 is at the center, or rather 5 is at the bottom, and the center is a P of 15, okay? So the question you're going to ask is, where is the P ratio of the market right now? So let's take a look. Okay, so I've just hopped over to a website, Bloomberg, where I can check out the latest P ratios of the different indexes or different markets. So what we're looking at here is PE, price to earnings ratio, over the last 12 months, TTM, right? So we're looking at the US market primarily. So if you take a look at the S&P 500, you can see the P ratio right now is 21.82, or you can see it's at a 22 PE, right? Uh, the Dow Jones is at 19.76 PE, okay? If you're looking at any other markets, you can take a look at the P right now. But again, let's take a look at the S&Ps at 21.82 PE. So what does that mean? So this means that currently the market is somewhere here at 21.82 or 22, somewhere about here. Okay, So you can see that in history, the market has reached roughly that level before crashing, crashing, crashing. And again, sometimes it may go a bit more expensive. It gets even more value to 25 or 30. Okay, in this case, it went up to about 26, right? So what does this mean? This means that if you look at the current market right now, the, the US market, the prices are nowhere near the bottom. They're not cheap and they're not fairly priced. They are expensive and we are getting near the top, okay? But we're not really as expensive as we were in previous bubbles, but we're getting there really soon. So from a fundamental perspective, the probability of a stock market crash is getting higher and higher each day as we get more and more expensive. Now let's take a look at it from a technical perspective in terms of looking at the chart patterns. Well, what you're seeing here is the S&P 500 over the last 30 years, or about 30 plus years. And you can see how do markets move. Markets move in wave-like uh, patterns, right? So what goes up, comes down, goes up, comes down, goes up, comes down. It's kind of like, like breathing, right? You breathe out. You can't breathe out forever. Your face will turn blue. You gotta, you gotta breathe in before breathing out again, right? So sure, I always tell people in the long run, the stock market will always go higher because of population growth, inflation, technology. The market will always go high in the long run. But in the short term, the market's like a roller coaster. What goes up has to go down before going higher. So looking at the chart pattern right now, does it look like we're coming down anytime soon? Well, let's take a look. So again, if you look at this pattern, it goes up, down, and up, and down, and up, and down, and up, and down, and up, and down, and up, boom. So the bigger the up wave, the bigger the down wave, right? Up, boom, okay? So if you understand a bit of history, over here, this crash over here was known as Black Monday. Right? You watched it uh, in the movie The Wolf of Wall Street. In 1987, the market crashed 38%. And then we had a small crash here known as the Asian financial crisis. We then had a big crash over here, which was a dot-com bubble. Right? And the market crashed 38%. 
And the biggest crash since the Great Depression happened uh, in 2007 October. This was the big crash. Boom! The market crashed 55%. Okay? And we are, whoa, 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 we are right there. Okay? So, sure, looking at the charts, it looks like, you know, we've, we've breathed out quite a bit. It's time we <gasps> breathe in before going higher, right? So, yeah, from a chart perspective, it looks like I'm not surprised if a market correction or bear market or crash comes anytime soon, okay? Now, if you take a look at the, in terms of years, you can see that from 87 to 97, this was 10 years between a crash. Uh, this was uh, four years between this crash and this was six years, okay? So from 2007, the last crash, we're now at 2017. So it's been kind of like 10 years since the last crash, okay? So history shows that, you know, pretty soon, within 10 years, you're going to get the next crash. So sure, quite probable that the market is going to crash, you know, anytime in the near future. Okay, so I've answered the first question, is there going to be a stock market crash? Of course, there's going to be one. And after mar every market crash, there are going to be people ending up poorer and some people ending up richer. And the difference is not luck, but it's the skills that you have when the crash happens. So let's answer the second question. Can you predict exactly when the stock market crash will happen? Now, many stock market gurus and commentators on TV will like you to think that they can. That's how they sell newsletters or, you know, airtime. But if you ask any professional investor, any professional trader, they'll tell you the same thing. Nobody can predict the stock market. No one can predict where it's going to be next week, next month, or next year. Whether it's a Warren Buffett or George Soros or a Ben Bernanke or Janet Yellen, no one can predict stock, the stock market, right? So let's take a look at a few examples of people who attempted to predict the stock market and were dead wrong. This happened in 1996 when the S&P 500 went from 540 points to 750 points. It seemed really high at the time and the Federal Reserve Chairman, Alan Greenspan at the time said, investors are undergoing a bout of irrational exuberance. So what he said was investors are irrational. The stock market is too high. It doesn't make sense. It has to come down. And if you had listened to his advice or his prediction, you sold or you short sold, you'd have regretted it. Because from 750 points, what happened? That's right. It went to 1,500 points. Let's look at another example. This was the, dot, uh, this was the uh, financial crisis, the subprime mortgage crisis. So the S&P went from 1,400 points all the way to 1,375 points. So people were panicking and they were thinking, is this the bottom? Is it going to get worse? Is it going to recover? Okay, so bear in mind, this was March 2007. The S&P was 1,375 points. And then the Federal Reserve Chairman, Ben Bernanke, he said, the subprime mortgage crisis is largely contained. So what he's saying is that, don't worry, the worst is over, we're at the bottom. And guess what happened when he predicted that? From 1,375 points, the S&P collapsed to 700 points. So once again, the prediction was dead off. Our most recent Fed Reserve Chairwoman, or Chairperson, uh, Janet Yellen, right? When the biotechnology sector took off and the biotech ETF went to 265 points, she said in July 2014, some areas of the current market, mainly biotech and social stocks, have run too far. In other words, it's too high, it's going to come down, right? Now, guess what happened? From 265, it went to 370 points, okay? So this should show you that no one can predict the stock market, not even the Federal Reserve chairperson. So it's a complete waste of time attempting to predict when it's going to happen. And if you make decisions based on predictions, you will always almost end up losing money or missing opportunities. So I always tell my students, never ever predict the stock market. No one can predict the stock market. You are not a fortune teller, neither am I. But the good news is you don't have to predict the stock market in order to make money from it. You don't have to predict the stock market in order to protect yourself from a crash. All you've got to do is to identify where the market is right now. Are we on an uptrend or are we on a downtrend? That's all you've got to know. 
if we are on an uptrend, you keep buying, you keep holding the stock, you go long and you ride the trend all the way till it ends. And you only exit, you only sell when the market reverses into a downtrend. Now, when's that going to happen? No one knows. But the moment it happens, you can read the charts and know exactly when to get out. And I'm going to show you how I do that in this video in a short while. So let me show you a great example of why it is a waste of time to predict the market. Instead, all we should do is to follow the market, to follow the trend. And if you just follow the trend without attempting to outsmart the market, you'll make a lot more money in the process. So let's look at this example. This is the stock market over the last nine years, from 2009 to 2017, and this is S&P 500, right? So some people, they are what we call buy and hold investors. They just buy and they just hold for the long run because they know in the long run, the market will always go up. But one of the things that I teach is trend following to identify the trend and to follow the trend using moving averages. So do watch my other videos on how I use moving averages to determine the uptrend and the downtrend. So if you watch my videos, you would know that I would buy when the 50 moving average is above the 150 moving average and both moving averages are sloping up, right? So that would be a buy signal over here, buy there. And that would be a sell signal, right? When the 50 crosses below the 150 and both moving averages are sloping down. So you buy there, sell there and take a nice profit over here. And you buy over there, again, the 50 crossing back above the 150 and selling over here. Again, making a, a profit over there. And again, buying it back over here and now you wouldn't sell it here, although the 50 crossed below the 150, because you can see the 150, the green line is sloping up. So that doesn't signal a downtrend. Both moving averages have to slope down to signal a downtrend. So you'd buy there and you would hold it here all the way and you would sell it somewhere here. Right? When the 50 again crosses below the 150, sloping down, sloping down, selling over there. And again, you wouldn't buy it here, even though there's a cross above the 150 because it's sloping down, you buy back here, 50 sloping up, sloping up, crossing over, buying there, all the way to there, right? So if you had simply followed uh, the trend, right? Buying here, selling there, buying here, selling there, buying here, selling there, buying and selling there, you'd have made right, close to 298% return in the marks in the last nine years. And if you analyze it, is equivalent to a 16% return compounded, okay? So the, the question is, if the market has been going up for the last nine years, you just follow the trend, you make a lot of money, why is it a lot of people have not been making money? And the reason is because they attempted to predict the market by reading news and listening to opinions of so-called experts and commentators, right? Let's take a look at the news in the last nine years. Well, the first one, you can see over here was July 2010. This was from the New York Times and the article said a market forecast that says take cover. With the stock market lurching again, plenty of investors are nervous and some are downright bearish. And then there's Robert Preacher, this guy who is another league entirely. Mr. Preacher is convinced we have entered a market decline of staggering proportions perhaps the biggest of the last 300 years. So imagine if you read this article in 2010, would you have bought stocks? No, you wouldn't have bought, you would have sold, right? And that's when he made the prediction in 2010. And by listening to this guy's prediction, you would have missed out on, right, a 200% return on your portfolio in the next nine years, all right? So it's a waste of time listening to all these predictions because no one can predict the market. Here's another one. This was Money News. Controversial interview exposes that five signs stocks will collapse in 2013. Did stocks collapse in 2013? No. In fact, in 2013, the market went up 26%. It was the biggest bull run in the market's history. But again, people predicted it went down. It didn't go down. Right? Next one. This was June 2013. Again, same year the market had a huge run. Doomsday poll, 87% risk of stock crash by year end. Didn't happen, right? Prediction is a waste of time. Another one, USA Today says, this was back in 2011, S&P lowers its outlook. Could US default on its debt? So at that time, many people were afraid to buy US stocks or fear that the US government would default on a debt 
causing a collapse in the economy. Didn't happen, right? Next, this was 2013 again. A US default seen as catastrophe dwarfing Lehman's fall. Bloomberg News. Let's look at another one. This was <clears throat> November 2012. Europe debt default are poised to rattle stock. So again, after the US crisis, now you've got a European debt crisis. And again, people are afraid, they don't buy stocks, and they miss out on that huge gain. And most recently, this was back in 2016, last year, what did Fortune say based on this analyst? Here comes the biggest stock market crash in a generation. So you can see by reading all this news, it biases your mind and by attempting to predict the market, you miss out on making great gains. So stop predicting the market. All you got to do is to follow the trend. As long as it's on an uptrend, you keep buying and you stay long on the market. But I'm going to teach you right now exactly how you identify the change in trend and how do you exit when the next crash happens and how do you profit from the next crash. Okay, so now that you know that no one can predict when the stock market will crash, let's answer the third question. Can we protect our portfolio and profit from the next crash? Absolutely. And the way to do that is to be, is to be able to identify the moment the uptrend changes into a downtrend. And again, I've explained this before in previous videos, so for those of you who have not watched those videos, let me just do a quick explanation right now. All right, so here's a quick lesson on reading trends for those of you who have not watched my previous videos or have attended my courses. One of the simplest ways to identify the medium-term and long-term trends is to use uh, the moving averages, like the 50 and 150 moving average, which is the blue line and the green line. So let's take a look at how we could have exited during the last financial crisis and made a good profit buying back when the trend resumed into an uptrend. Okay, so let me just zoom in. And you can see that this was the last financial crisis that started in October 07, and the market crashed 55%, and a lot of people lost their hard-earned savings. And again, if you had learned this technique, you would have gotten out right at the start of the downtrend. So let's take a look. So recall what I said earlier. Um, an uptrend is when the 50 moving average, the blue line, is above the green line. Okay, so as long as the blue line is above the green line and they are sloping up, that's a confirmed uptrend. A downtrend is confirmed when the 50 crosses below the 150. In other words, the, the blue line crosses below the green line and both lines must be flat or sloping down. If either one of the lines are sloping up, it is not a change in trend. So, for example, if you take a look over here, okay, the 50 crossed below the 150, but that is not a downtrend because you can see that the green 150 is still sloping up. So that is not a downtrend signal. Similarly, let's take a look over here. All right, again, the 50 crosses below the 150, but the 150 is still sloping up. So again, it's not a downtrend. So you would have uh, stayed in the market, riding the trend all the way to the very top. Now, let's zoom in here and see uh, where was the start of the downtrend? Again, you can see the 50 crossing the 150 here, but again, it's not a downtrend because it's still sloping up. Can you see it's sloping up? Okay, now, over here, you can see this was the start of the downtrend. 50 crosses 150. Can you see that? Blue crosses green and sloping down, sloping down. So this, let me circle here, this is the exact point that you sell at 1,500 points. Okay? And you can see that by identifying the, ch uh, the change in trend, you would have gotten out of the market over there at 1,005 before the crash of 55% all the way to the bottom at 660. Okay, so I didn't predict the market. All I do is to read the reversal in trend. And once the market crashes, you know that what goes out must come up. So you wait for... Once again, the 50 to cross above the 150, and it's going to be sloping up. It's going to be sloping up, so that is a buy. So you buy back somewhere there at about 900, okay? And buying at 900, you would write the trend all the way, and you would sell somewhere there at about 1,000, okay? And again, buy it back over here. 
at 1175, as you can see, 1175, and write the trend all the way, and you will sell it somewhere here at 1002. So you, you make a slight profit, and again, buy it back over here. You can see it's sloping up, it's sloping up, you buy it somewhere here at 1275, and write the trend. Now you wouldn't sell here, you can see the green is sloping up, so you keep it there, and you hold it all the way to close to 2,000, right? So notice by, by reading the trends, all you gotta do is to get out the moment the trend changes. So let's look at where we are right now. So currently, as I'm speaking right now, it's the 7th of November, and you can see that the trend is a very clear uptrend with the 50 is above the 150. They're both sloping up, so again, no matter how high the PE ratio is, no matter how high it looks, I would not sell right now. I wouldn't short the market because you never go against the trend. My mentor told me when I was young, he said, Adam, there are three things you never go against. You never go against gravity, you never go against the power of love, and you never go against the trend. So how do I know when the next crash has happened? When the 50 crosses below the 150 and they are both flattening or sloping down, that's exactly when I'm going to sell all my stocks and I'm going to make money as the market crashes. So how do I make my money as it crashes? Now, a downtrend, a market crash, typically lasts for two to three years. So for two to three years, the only way to make money is to short sell the market or to buy inverse ETFs or to use put options. So these are the advanced techniques that I teach in my stock investing and stock trading course. I do it live in Singapore, in Asia, known as Wealth Academy. I also have my professional online stock trading courses. You can find it at piranaprofits.com. So that's where I'll teach you the nuts and bolts of how to short sell, how to use inverse ETFs to profit during a two to three year downtrend. So understand this, I can't predict when the crash is gonna happen, it's going to happen when it happens, but before it happens, please learn exactly how to use these techniques. So again, let me just uh, repeat what I said. Once we identify the reversal into a downtrend, we either short sell stocks and ETFs, like you can short sell the S&P 500 ETF known as a SPY, or you can do a short sell on the Dow Jones ETF known as the Diamonds, or you can buy inverse ETFs. Inverse ETFs are ETFs that are designed to go opposite of the market. For example, you can buy the uh, DOG, that's the inverse Dow Jones ETF. So when the ETF, when the Dow Jones goes down, the DOG will go up. Or you can buy the S&P 500 inverse ETF known as the SH. So when the S&P goes down, the SH will go up. Let's take a quick look at how this ETF works. All right, so for example, once you identify that the S&P 500 is on a downtrend like it was here, right, during the financial crisis as it collapsed 55%, uh, you could have made money by short selling the S&P ETF known as a SPY. So that's a SPY over here. So short selling means you sell by borrowing shares from the broker, right? So I'll teach you exactly how do you do that uh, during my courses that you can take. So you do a short sell at say, a 120. So you sell at 120 by borrowing shares, you get a credit of 120, and when it collapses and reverses back over here, you can buy it back at about $75. Okay, and you can make a nice profit, okay? Let me just punch in some numbers over here. A nice profit of $45. Okay, so that's one way is by doing a short sell. So I always say that every good investor has to learn how to short sell to profit during a market downturn that will be coming inevitably, all right? The next thing you can do is you can buy uh, the SH. So the SH is the short S&P ETF. So this ETF is designed to go opposite of the S&P 500. So you can see, again, back during the financial crisis, over here, back in 2008 to 2009, when the market was going down, the ETF was going up. So it goes opposite. And now that the 
market is going up, you can see that the ETF is going down all the way. All right? So it's a mirror of the ETF. And of course, the third option is you can buy put options. And by buying put options, you can profit as the market collapses as well. So if you like the video, you can subscribe for more videos or you can visit my playlist in the YouTube channel. If you'd like to inquire or find out more about my live training programs, you can go to wealthacademyglobal.com or piranaprofits.com for my online professional stock and forex trading courses. This is Adam Koo and I'll see you soon.